All right, this is lesson 2.8 of our pre-calc 12 class. Unit 2 is called polynomial functions. Lesson 8 is the last lesson for this unit. It's called solving polynomial equations. In this lesson, we're going to uh, figure out how to determine possible factors of a polynomial. And we're going to figure out how to solve polynomial equations. There's not a whole lot of new information here, but tying a lot of things together, because it is the last lesson of the unit. So if ax minus b is a factor of a polynomial function, p of x, then a is a factor of the leading coefficient, and b is a factor of the constant term. So uh, our leading coefficient in this example is 3. So our possible a values, or coefficients of our factor, any factor x, could be positive 1, negative 1, positive 3, or negative 3. Those are the only possible uh, coefficients on any factor for this polynomial function. And then uh, the leading, or the, the, the constant term is negative 10. So 10 could be 1 times 10 or 2 times 5. So the only possible b values for any factor of this function, positive or negative 1, positive or negative 2, positive or negative 5, or positive or negative 10. So it's a degree of 3, so I know we're dealing with 3 factors. Um, but the, all the possible factors that could possibly work for this thing would be something like positive x minus 5, or positive x plus 5, or 3x plus 5, or, or positive x minus 10, or positive 3x plus 1, or any combination of those, a's and b's. Now let's see here, there would be 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 possible factors that make sense. Um, that's pretty much it. So, if I was giving you a function like g of x, and let's say, let's say we didn't give this information. Let's say it didn't tell us that x plus 1 is a factor. We could figure out all possible factors. Um, and just start dividing by those and seeing if we get one without a remainder. Or we could use the factor theorem. So like, uh, go back here. If I make a fraction, b over a, I can, I can see if we have any of these, and, and, and plug that number in for x. If f of b over a equals 0, then that would be a factor, those, that a and b combination. So like, uh, if, if this one, the a is 1 and the b is 5, f of 5 over 1, or f of 5, equals, if that equals 0, then I know this is one of our factors. So we can use this new knowledge with the factor theorem to just look at a function and tell what is a factor. It's a really quick computation you could do with a calculator to determine that. Now in this case, it gives us one of the factors, so it makes our job way easier. Because it told us that x plus 1 is a factor, it already told us that g of negative 1 equals 0, aka our factor theorem. This is consistent with our a, b thinking. Since our leading coefficient is 1, our a values can be positive or negative 1 only. So x is a positive 1. That's consistent. Because our constant term is 15, we're thinking 1 times 15 or 3 times 5. So positive or negative, 1, 3, 5, and 15 are the only possible b values. Positive 1 is this case, so that's consistent with what we just learned. Since we know that x plus 1 is a factor, we can go ahead and uh, factor or divide this thing out by our factor. We get a remaining polynomial of x squared plus 2x minus 15. And then this one, we could, we could do the same thing. We could pull out um, our a, b, or b over a, and see if it, use factor theorem and see if it equals zero, blah, blah, blah. But in this case, um, this is a quadratic. We could just factor this thing with pre-calc 11 methods. So this one we can just factor by inspection, like use box method, x, whatever, um, foil reverse, whatever you want to call it. But now that we have it factored out, we can identify our solutions. Um, our solutions are the x values that make this equation true, um, or our roots, I guess you could say, our zeros. These are the x values that make the whole thing equal to zero.
Okay, so here's another one. Same thing, it tells us this time that we have our function of degree 3, and we have um, f of 7 equals 0. Well, if we think of that as our b minus a, that's telling us that x minus 7 is a factor. So we can take our polynomial function and divide by that factor. We get a remaining quadratic that we can factor by inspection or using pre calc 11 methods. We can find all three zeros. Okay, so here's another one. This guy is um, a little more challenging because the graph of this polynomial function is degree 3, so there's three possible zeros. However, if you were to graph this thing in a calculator or like Desmos, you would see that it's a vertical translation up, hence the plus 34. And so there's going to be some imaginary roots. So let's see here. If h of negative 1 is 0, that means x plus 1 is a factor. So we're going to take our polynomial function and divide it by x plus 1. The remaining piece is 2x squared minus 4x plus 34. If we try doing this by inspection, uh, we can't do it. It's not going to work. So we're going to pull out our old friend, the quadratic formula. And if we plug these numbers in to our, what's called the discriminant, or the thing inside the radical, um, let's see here, because negative 4 would be b, so b squared minus 4ac, negative 4 would be b, 2 would be a, and 34 would be c. What we're going to get is, let's see here, 2 times, 4 times 2 times 34 is a much bigger number than uh, negative 4 squared. So it's going to be 16 minus a bigger number than 16. This is going to give us a negative number inside of the radical. Well, you can't take the square root of a negative number without getting into the imaginary plane. So what that tells us is that those two roots that come from this part of the, or this factor of our function, are going to produce imaginary roots. And so what that tells us is that they're not zeros. Because imaginary roots aren't zeros. Which means that x plus 1, this factor right here, gives us our only zero possible. The, the test to see if something like this is going to give imaginary roots or not is to just pull out that b squared minus 4ac. It's called the discriminant. If the discriminant is less than 0, like in this case, then it's going to be imaginary. If the discriminant is equal to 0, well, that means you just have um, one real solution or one real 0 to add to our other 0. And if a discriminant is greater than zero, well that means we're going to have two unique factors, or two unique zeros. But that is not the case for this one. Uh, our discriminant, if you plug these numbers in, is going to be a negative, less than zero. So these roots are imaginary, so we do not include them in our answer. Okay, so take away. Um, we can use the leading coefficient and the constant term, the front and the back, to determine all possible factors for a function. Um, and that gives us a basis or a, a list of factors to use the factor theorem on to look for factors. It makes the job way simpler. Um, we can also solve polynomial functions now. So we are done with the unit. Next unit is trigonometry. Ooh.